Welcome everybody. Uh, Joe Lucy here with my weekly market huddle. Uh, this week's theme, tax planning. If somebody could let me know whether or not they hear me, just a little put a message in the chat that uh, that I am live. That would be wonderful. Awesome. So, um, lots to talk about this week. You know, I, I was looking at my numbers. Um, I've kind of checked in a little bit with where we were at uh, from the very first time we did these on March 23rd. We were at 18,500. We currently are at 24,250-ish, about 31% half of the bottoms. In fact, uh, I was looking at the numbers. If we go back a year ago, would you believe it? Most people wouldn't, but we are actually up from where we would have been here last May 11th. So uh, Dow Jones and the S&P are both up about one and a half percent. So kind of come a long ways from where we started these. We're gonna continue to do them because I've had a lot of great feedback. Um, but this week we're gonna be kind of maybe talking a little bit less about uh, uh, the volatility in the market and what's going on there and a little bit more about something you can be doing proactive to put your retirement planning in a better situation. So here's the... Uh, uh, the uh, disclaimer that the attorneys make me put out there, just keep in mind, I'm going to dig into a little bit on taxes here today. And um, I want to make sure that um, everybody knows that uh, I'm not a CPA, although I'm a certified financial planner. We spend a lot of time with comprehensive planning. We believe that wealth management is different than uh, what we do here. We aren't just doing the investment strategies. It's about how those investment strategies tie together with an overall um, comprehensive retirement plan, including tax planning, income planning, um, health care planning, legacy planning, and so forth. I'm going to dig in a little bit more to one of the uh, three stool legs, one of those three areas. It's the investment strategies combined with an income plan, combining with the tax strategy that I think makes the most significant difference for many of our clients. In fact, um, at the end of today's presentations, we're going to talk a little bit about how if you are a client or if you are not a client, you can sit down with one of our team members here and put today's uh, uh, discussion into action, how we can take this, move forward with it, put ourselves in a better position long term tax wise, be proactive and let a re less reactive. I, I just kind of, I don't know, I kind of feeling it out there. I don't know about you, but well, I know that there's still some concern out there about the COVID and, and where things are going with this and how long it's going to be around. I'm also feeling that a lot of us are just kind of tired of being reactive to kind of this situation here. We're looking for ways uh, uh, to, to maybe get out and about, you know, uh, for me and uh, my family yesterday, uh, we took a nice long walk around uh, uh, the lake, me, my wife, Patty, and my son, Gavin, for Mother's Day. We had a fantastic event on uh, Friday. We um, had uh, um, some of our clients uh, uh, come out, join us for a, uh, uh, where, we, where we handed out some uh, Mother's Day meals um, for a for, um, handful of clients that lived in the neighborhood around Jack's Cafe. Um, I don't know if you're uh, if you've seen any of the things recently on this, but a lot of the restaurant owners are really having a tough time. They've been shut down for a while, and uh, we looked at it as a great way for us to reach out to those families that had uh, uh, were in the Jacks area in Northeast Minneapolis there, and at the same time help out uh, one of the great partners of ours, Jacks Cafe. So we're going to be doing more of those. So you want to make sure you're on our email list. Make sure if you aren't currently um, uh, getting invitations to to things like that that you. Uh, uh, notate at the end here, you'd like to be included into our uh, mail list where we send off our weekly updates and what have you, and invitations to this and things too. So here's where we've been. Here's where we're going, going back to last fall. Um, the S&P 500, as we know, peaked out here uh, first part of end of February, early March. We came down 34% off the top. We've now recovered 31. You'd think that that would mean that we're back to highs. Of course, that's not the way it works. The more you go down, we have to get back a higher gains. We're going to have to get back a little bit better than 50% to, to reach our old highs, but we're up 31%. And as I was saying earlier, believe it or not, we're, we're actually ahead of where we were last year, about one and a half percent. So uh, um, anyways, less about the, the markets today and the investment strategies. Let's focus on some tax planning. 
Um, you know, I'm using this term tax planning. I want you to understand that there's a difference between tax planning and tax preparation. Um, it's not unusual when we start talking about taxes, families are thinking, okay, I, I've sat down with my CAPA or my account. I, I put the, went through the shoebox. We put everything in order. See, the tax preparation is when you go through, you're looking for a couple of deductions. Um, it can reduce your taxes short term, but for the most part, what's done is done. You're not going to necessarily, it's about using today's tax code with what's already happened. What I'm talking about here today, tax planning is look forward planning. How do I put myself in a better situation tax wise long term? How do I reduce taxes in my retirement? A uh, little secret here, if you are rear, near retirement, if you're in retirement, or if you are just paying taxes right now, uh, today's tax rates, you are probably in the best position we've been in 40 years to take charge of your taxes. doesn't take a brain surgeon to understand that at $27, $28 trillion in national debt, we've had another $3 trillion in stimulus, more on the way. Um, I think taxes are on sale. So taking a tax planning approach, a proactive approach to tax planning, I think is going to be maybe the best way that you can reduce expenses throughout your retirement. Um, this probably won't show up well, but I understand tax planning. It really comes down to three tax buckets. The very far left bucket there, that taxable bucket, that's money that can they hit the checkbook each and every month that hits the tax return every month. Things like wages, um, possibly social security, your pensions, some of that uh, uh, rental income, if you've got that, dividends, interest, anything that's hitting the tax return there. Um, there's also tax deferred money. And that's where we oftentimes see a lot of our families that we are helping get into retirement and navigate through retirement. Um, probably about half of you have the lion's share of your resources in this bucket. One of the things that we oftentimes will talk about with clients is do you have good tax allocation? Do you have everything in one bucket? Is it just in the tax deferred account? It's been easy over the last uh, uh, 30 years to just fill this bucket up because this is where your money goes into those tax deferred retirement accounts, 401ks, 403bs, thrift savings plans, uh, Minnesota deferred comp plans. Your employers helped you put money into this bucket. Keep in mind the number one lie that we've been told over the last, uh, uh, since the 1980s is this, you're gonna put money into this tax deferred account, this retirement account, it's gonna go in at a higher tax bracket and when you take it out, it'll be lower. Surprise, surprise, here we are, we're getting ready for retirement and many retirees are absolutely surprised to find that they're actually gonna be taking money out at a higher rate than when they put that in. And I'm gonna show you here in a little bit, if we do absolutely nothing, uh, it's a very high likelihood that that's where we're going to be. The more we rely on the IRS's tax plan, the more likely we're going to be paying higher tax with this tax deferred money. You know how this all worked. We put the money in, we got a deduction on the tax on our on our paycheck. It's been growing tax deferred and and uh, it's a two edged two two uh, two edged sword, right? The money's grown much larger than many of us thought we would ever have in these accounts. But the other side of this, every penny of it has to be taxed. It's going to be taxed by you and your spouse if you're married. If you pass away, you'll be passed on to your surviving spouse. And there's something called a widow's penalty. It means that the widows pay a higher tax for, uh, brackets for the same income. And then it'll go to the kids and they get to pay the kiddos tax. So you got the joint and survivor tax where you're paying money, oftentimes at higher rates than what you deferred, comes out and somewhere down the road passes to a surviving spouse. You get the widow's tax, the kiddo's tax. Um, that's really the gist of what I'm going to be talking about here for the next 10 minutes or so. How do I avoid paying more than my fair share here? How do I get proactive? Um, other areas that are in these tax deferred buckets um, or this middle bucket, well, it can be capital gains. Maybe you have some property that's been accumulating in value. You don't pay tax on the growth of that until you sell it. There's maybe those stocks. Um, we also can look at a uh, deferred annuity, money that you might have written a check out for. It came from a brokerage account, goes into this account. There's no required distribution on this money. The money does grow tax deferred. You have to pay tax when it comes out. Another one that we see a little less often is the uh, like the old savings bonds, the double E bonds, the H bonds that we used to have. A lot of times our old employers, remember when I was in the Marine Corps, they used to come around and ask us to put money into these double E bonds. Um, well, the interest in those accrue tax deferred. 
A lot of times families are surprised when they cash those out that there's tax due. So anyways, we're really looking at four areas here, tax deferred money, retirement accounts, IRAs and your uh, employer sponsor plan. We have annuities potentially, we have capital gains um, and those old savings bonds. If those are all tax deferred money. Let's move on. We got the tax free bucket, tax free or tax advantage bucket. Um, there's really three and a half categories or three and a half kind of accounts we can have here. The one that everybody's familiar with is your Roth IRA. As you know, you put the money into the Roth IRA, you don't get a tax deduction. If I take money from a tax deferred retirement account and move it into a tax free account, I'll pay tax on that grow on that move when I do that. But once it's in the tax free account, the growth in the account will grow uh, tax free. It comes out tax free. There's some other benefits, things like uh, uh, no required distributions and such um, that, that you, you want to be aware of. Um, we also have municipal bonds. Now, municipal bonds um, were a more attractive tax-free option here up until a little bit more recently. Uh, with low interest rates, I'm a little worried about um, buying a municipal bond fund, like a mutual fund. A little bit more comfortable if I'm buying the individual um Mutual, uh, mutual uh, municipal bonds. Um, so if I buy a Hennepin County municipal bond, uh, that money will be coming, it goes in, it grows tax-free, comes out tax-free for the most part. Um, LERPs, life insurance retirement plans, properly designed life insurance can also be used as a tax-free asset. And here's the third and a half. The one that only gets half credit is the health savings account. In fact, um, I'll tell you, health savings accounts are wonderful vehicles. The problem is I can't get enough into them. When I put the money in, I usually get a deduction. When I take the money out, as long as it goes towards a medical expense, it comes out tax-free. Um, I can also buy a boat or something in retirement. It'll come out like an IRA. So that's why it only gets half a credit. Depends on what the money comes out for. Biggest problem with uh, health savings accounts is that I can't get enough into them. But if you have that option, it's a great option. You should be maximizing that. Uh, visit with one of our team members if you have access to a health savings account. And let's see if there's uh, uh, ways that you may not be aware that you can maximize that. One is that when you're uh, 55, uh, health savings accounts, you can take uh, make your contribution, your spouse make a separate one. You actually get an extra $1,000 in these accounts if you know how to plan around that. So anyways, this is what we're talking about. And really what we're talking about is getting money out of this tax deferred account, this middle account. How do I move money from there into tax free? And sometimes it makes sense to just pay tax on it, live on it a little bit, but avoid any uh, of these uh, widows and kiddos taxes and even for ourselves, just required minimum distributions. Uh, Will Rogers says the biggest, uh, the income tax has made more liars at American than golf. It's probably true. So anything I'm talking about here, I'm not talking about any way to scheme the system. We're talking about moral, ethical, legal ways that you can do this. Um, and, and that's what we're going to talk about for the next five minutes here. So, uh, don't go anywhere at the end. We're going to offer an opportunity so you can, uh, uh, sit down with one of the team members here. And if you are a client, let's review where you're at. Uh, look for other opportunities. If you're not a client, we'll we open that up to you right now during this time as well. So uh, tax deferred, we're talking about that middle bucket. Keep in mind that if I do nothing, if I'm on the government program, we have to be aware, uh, well, two dates. The first one is 59 and a half. That's when I can start taking money out without a 10% penalty. But the bigger number is 72. It used to be 70 and a half, but now it's 72. I have to take a required minimum distribution. Starts off at around 3.5%, grows to 5% by the time I'm in my 80s. Can get into the 10% range if I make it to my 90s. 10% of the account value has to come out and be taxed at your regular rates. The problem is, um, as we age, more and more has to come out of these accounts. More and more of this money may not be needed for expenses. Um, oftentimes we have families that have done a great job of the other planning around this. They've got enough income. They got maybe a pension, some other sources of income, nice diversified income sources. And all of a sudden 72 comes about and they're forced to take the money out. Can't think of a worse thing than having expenses that I want to live on here. My lifestyle expenses, having all the income I need. And all of a sudden 72 happens and the IRS makes me pay more tax. I'm going to show you what that looks like for a, hypothetical couple in just a second. Um, better option than this might be to be proactive. Let's get this money out of the tax deferred account, move it towards something that's tax advantaged. 
I uh, already talked about some of the benefits of this. No required distributions, passes on to the uh, kiddos tax-free, avoid the um, survivorship widow's benefits, uh, penalties, lots of different benefits of doing this. The problem is you got to know what you're doing. You got to know you're doing it for the right reason. Um, we're in a tremendous opportunity, best tax bracket we've seen. We also know with more, a little bit more clarity that we're going to see taxes going a lot higher. But if you just do this willy-nilly without a plan in place, uh, you're very likely going to end up paying more than your fair share. So you want to make sure that you're sitting down, looking at the pros and cons. And even that, there's, uh, you know, we start moving money around. Uh, you get above a certain threshold, you start paying extra Medicare premiums. Is that makes sense for you? Sometimes. Let's put a plan together. Let's show you what the numbers look like. And then let's run it through a couple different scenarios. Make sure that you're doing it for the right reasons. Um, here's this example that I was talking about. It's a hypothetical uh, example. I'm assuming here for just a second, we have a married filing joint couple. They both are age 60, um, high school sweethearts perhaps. Um, they are both going to live to the age of 90 and uh, they're gonna get 5% return on their retirement accounts. So it's a 5% return each and every year. Forget the coronavirus ever occurred. It's just five, 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 five. They're also in a 30% combined federal and state tax rate. That means they're in the 22% bracket. Plus uh, they're paying about eight to Minnesota. So that gets them at about 30%. Keep in mind, this is an illustration here. It's not gonna meet any specific example, but it's to give you an idea of the impact that some potential, some uh, proactive tax planning can give us. When I look at this, if I go on the government plan, if I have the IRS plan, right, I am going to, at 72, have to start taking money out of my half a million dollars. Half a million dollars in this account. I'm going to put that money in there. As it comes out at 30%, I'm going to pay between 72 and 90, approximately $240,000 at this 30% tax rate. I'm also making an assumption here that this money isn't needed necessarily for day-to-day -day expenses. In fact, most of it's going to go back into savings. If that's the case, that savings is going to earn interest and such. Let's call that another hundred or ninety-seven thousand. End of the day, at ninety years old, we're going to pass this money on to our kiddos. Our kiddos are going to take the money out. They're going to pay a lump sum on what's left because they're just going to pay it all off. Keep in mind, it's not real practical that they'd be able to get by with just 30% if they did it that quick, but let's just say in this case, they could. We're talking about $505,000 in taxes. Now, a lot of times families are absolutely astonished by seeing that their half a million dollar IRA account, realistically, conservatively, I'm not trying to push the envelope here too much, um, you're gonna pay about a half a million dollars on a half a million dollars if you're 60 years old and you live to age 90. Here's the other extreme. Let's wave a one. I'm gonna, before I go here, unrealistic, I could take a half a million dollars this year and just move it all into a Roth IRA and only pay 30% tax. It's gonna push me above the thresholds. I get that, but I'm trying to, you know, show you some extremes here. And if I do that, I'm gonna pay, 150,000, that's 30% of my half a million dollars will be paid when I convert the money over. Okay, does that make sense? We got, if we stick on the government plan, we're going to pay 505, very likely much more because tax rates are likely going to go higher. A little bit of an extreme here. Maybe we could get it down to 150,000. I guess that for the average uh, client we're seeing, maybe it'll be about the $200,000 range, maybe two and a quarter, but but I'm trying to show some extremes here. This $150,000 you are looking at here, when I convert to the Roth, that $150,000 is your obligation. If you've got a half a million dollars sitting in your account today, that half a million dollars is not all yours. A lot of times we're, we, we think it might be. But the reality is we got a silent partner. That silent partner is the IRS. And the best case scenario, unless I'm leaving it all to charity, the best case scenario is we're going to get by with maybe paying about 150000 Like I said, most families probably a little higher, but, but that would be the best obligation. On the other side of this, if I stick with the IRS plan, we're probably going to pay a half a million dollars or a little bit more. The difference between this is the $355,000 
$355,580 opportunity. That's the opportunity. We can run this analysis for you. We can show you what the extremes are. We can show you what your opportunity is. If we can share with you ways that you can save over $355,580 in taxes, wouldn't that make sense to sit down with somebody on the team here to review that? If you're already on this program with us, let's go back and revisit. There's things that have changed in the last few months. We've got uh, market volatility, things we probably should take a look at this again. But the plan here is this, how do we take and pay less tax and the only way to do it is to start paying some taxes now at 40 year lows. I'm afraid that there's gonna be a whole lot of folks. You ever seen that commercial? It's about the, I, uh, I, I, I could have had a V8. Well, I think a lot of families are gonna wake up January 1st, 2026. They're gonna say, I could have paid a whole lot less tax had I just done something about it now. Um, if you only got an investment strategy, if nobody's looking at the taxes, that could be where you sit. You may end up finding yourself in a situation where you're going, my gosh, I could have paid a whole lot less tax. So what's the opportunity? Let's uh, talk about that. We will sit down with you one-on-one. -on -one. We can do this virtually. Most everything we're doing right now is through video, or, or if you don't want to do the video, we can just do a phone conversation. We can share uh, different situations. We want to look at the tax return. We want to look at everything else too, right? We got to look at how your investments are allocated, how much of your money is in IRAs versus brokerage accounts and how much of the money is already in Roth IRAs is going to make a difference in the strategies. Where's your tax bracket? Are you at the top of the 12% bracket? And, and any dollar above that's going to cost you an extra 80% because you're paying 22. Or are you in the bottom of the 22 and we can go to max that out? Or, or we got Medicare, lots of different things. Good news is this. We're going to sit down with you. We're going to show you what the opportunities are for you so that you can make sure that you make the best decision to schedule a review. You can always call these numbers I put up there. The office number is the best one right now, 952-460-3260. We've had folks uh, listening to that the whole time. I talked earlier about some of the events like the Jack's uh, uh, that we did here, the Jack's uh, Cafe we did uh uh, handed out some other state mails. If you want to make sure you're on those lists, info at Secure Retirements is the best way to get there. Um, but the office phone number, 952-460-3260, best way to reach out to us, or even better yet, click on that offer right there. When you click the offer, it'll immediately go to one of our calendars. We can immediately put you on the, uh, it, it, we can do it in the next 30 seconds here. You click there, find a time that works for you. It'll immediately come on our calendar. We'll send you out an invite. We'll make sure we get you all the information. We can do this. I think we've got a couple openings even this week. Uh, we don't have a ton. We're still um, actually busier now than we have been in a long time. Um, but but we're but we're we're uh, we'll, we'll make some rooms because this is all important stuff. Um, that's all I got this week, folks. I went a little bit longer than I wanted to, but. Um, We'll be back next Monday with some another uh, Joe Lucy market huddle and, and uh, hope you all enjoy the rest of your week. Have a great day.